The dynamics of education, particularly higher education, has constantly been changing globally ever since the liberalization of world economic order, which actually resulted in the interdependence of economies of nations. Since higher education in the liberalized global society demands human resource with globally competitive skills, the review and adoption of new educational policies became inevitable across all nations. Hence, the National Education Policy 2020, recently approved and notified by the Government of India, is one such ambitious effort to make Indian education system not only globally competitive and relevant to global employment requirements, but also to meet the changing requirements of the nation, building its industry and economy. Now, I would like to briefly analyze some macro aspects of the national educational policy of the government of India. First of all, I wish to start with the basic education. The new policy has rightly recognized the importance of formative age in one's life, that is, the age between three to eight years, that actually is an age when foundation of one's personality is laid. Extending the period of compulsory education between 3 to 18 years is a very progressive and a great step which makes the child to go to schooling system right at the age of 3. Most people are not aware of the fact that a first generation learner who is denied pre-primary education is a potential dropout and hence this step will bring a sea change in the quality of primary education and will drastically bring down school dropouts. The second positive takeaway from this policy is the college education, which has not only given greater flexibility of learning with choice of choosing interdisciplinary subjects between arts and sciences, but have lateral exit route after one, two, and three years of college study with a certificate, diploma, and a degree, and an honors degree at the end of fourth year. A lateral exit gives the student a dignity to seek employment with a certificate of skill and not as a college dropout. So a four-year degree program syncs well with the international system of education and facilitates not only employment prospects, abroad, but also smooth entry for higher studies. The third aspect of the policy has also laid a great focus on the skill development and practical training during the undergraduate programs to meet the new requirements of the Indian industry. But one needs to decipher between two aspects of higher education. It's true that it is to produce human resource for meeting the domestic needs of the industry, science and technology, administration and so on, besides equip equipping our youth to meet global competition in the job market. The second aspect of higher education is to create such higher education institutions of research and learning, which become hubs of knowledge, generation, new inventions, and appear on global ranking of the best universities of the world. Now, this is what every country is racing for, and India is also dreaming of its universities to come in the top 50 of the world-class ranking and world-class universities. The Prime Minister of India last year allocated 10,000 crores to select and promote some universities as world-class universities. Now, in my analysis, I wish to bring out what the Indian national education policy and even our institutions have missed out to be ranked as 
world class universities not even coming into the top 200 why is it because our policies have not recognized certain basic characteristics which are common between all world class universities and which are glaringly absent in all our educational institutions what are these number 1 critical mass it is a prerequisite of every university campus just as to give give you a comparison the average student strength on indian campuses is about 3500 while globally it is 15 to 20 to 25000 students on the campus in the world ranking universities and sometimes they even go up to 1 lakh students on the campus in india we have 9 students per acre of land while the world class universities have up to 25 to 30 students per acre of campus land we fail to recognize this disparity and the significance of critical mass of students as well as faculty our campuses can be compared to i think just ponds and the world class universities can be compared to oceans we all know that in ponds we can get good fish sufficient but we can get only small fishes while if you fish in a ocean you get sharks and whales that's the reason why indian universities have not produced till date a nobel laureate or a field medalist nor are known to produce such outstanding innovations inventions and global patents the second very important missing point in the national education policy is on the importance of diversity for flourishing creativity in the institutions through cross breeding of ideas and interaction the world class universities have a policy to maintain certain diversity index both in faculty as well as among students unlike our universities and institutions which are highly localized with a population of both both in the case of population of students as well as teachers on our campuses the third focus that is missing is on the intra and inter university collaboration collaboration between the central and the state institutions and national laboratories and abolition of jurisdiction of the universities for admission and mobility of students and faculty across the universities this is very strange and unique to india as nowhere in the world a university has any jurisdiction and if it existed none of the indians would have studied in the western universities there is also no emphasis on the new age in the new education policy on the autonomy of the institutions in framing of curricula in recruiting faculty and financial spending and raising public funding finally the spending on education is so less it's less than 0.5% of the gdp as against the requirement of at least 6% of the gdp in conclusion i would only like to say that new education policy will certainly bring down school dropouts will certainly give flexibility of learning and equipping our students with better skills but it has no promise of creating innovative world class universities with inventions and global patents and producing nobel laureates and field medalists unless we adopt to some of the characteristic features of the other world ranking universities thank you